In today's video, we are going to put two data types head to head and seeing which ones we use for what. Let's get to it. If you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe and share below and you can be updated with new videos just like this. For watching this video, if you haven't already watched the two videos before this one, click on this card right here and that will give you a little bit more insight of what's going on in this video. But just to summarize both of those for those of you that already did watch it, is that with arrays and hashes, an array is just a collection of objects, while a hash is an object of a key value pairs. And in multiple languages, objects is just a word to describe some sort of a noun, a person, place, or a thing. And that is essentially what object is. The other thing of what objects are is anything inside of the programming language it could be considered an object, such as strings, hashes, classes, every single data type, as well as all of the fundamentals are considered objects. So with this, when we put them head to head, the real question is, when would you use one over the other? Let's see what we are going to do depending on different scenarios. So when you are having storage, technically you can use either one of the data types with arrays and hashes. So I have the array on the top here and then a hash on the bottom here. If you want to store multiple values or multiple items, then you can technically do it both ways. But with the first way with the array, you can see for each of the values inside of this array, they each have their own index. And then when we reference them, we can just reference them by index. When we are looking at this version here with hashes, it's still technically correct while we have the key for the individual fruits as well as the value to be the fruit themselves. And for this particular case, if you are going to store multiple values, I would use the array option here. The reason being is that when you are referencing each of them by index or if you're iterating through them, the better way to do it is they perform besides saying fruit one or fruit two or fruit three. It needs to have a much more meaningful, unique key value for each of the fruit themselves for it to make more sense for this to be used. That is why for storage, I would use the top version, which is arrays. Now let's talk about when you are describing an object. And this object is mostly when I'm referring to a person, place, or thing. With the first part, you can see that I use an array to describe a person. The first name is in the first position, second name is in the second position, and the age is in the third position and final position. Now the second way is where we have it described as a hash. And with this way, you can see that each key represents what of the value it is for each of the attributes. So we have first, last, and age here. Both of these ways work, but you actually have to put a little bit more work when you're putting it in an array here. The reason being is that each of the indexing is technically referred to as a attribute. And you have to memorize what position each of those attributes are. And if you're inputting them into an array, you have to make sure that they're in the right order for that to work. So you have to have the first name in the first position, age in the last position, etc. For the hash, you can see that we don't need to have it be by position. This could be in whatever order you want. The more important thing is what they represent. And here, you know that with the key of first, you can always see that first is always going to be the first name. Same with last, that will always be the last name. And age would always be representation of an age. So for this specific case where when you are describing an object for more specifically a noun, a person, place, or thing, both of them work, but the hashes actually work a lot more better because it's much more specific of what each of the values are, and it is much more easier to manipulate and call back the data for it to be in this form. Now, what about if you only have one value to be able to be stored? Such as if you have a hexadecimal value here, and you can either store it with an array or you can store it with a hash. 
Again, both of these ways work. Which way is actually more efficient and preferred? If you actually look at these ways, you can see that this hash way is a lot more efficient is that you have this specific value be a key of color. So we actually know what that is. And to be honest, for both of these ways, the preferred way is actually neither of these. The reason being is that it's actually a little bit more work to reference it inside of an index or to reference it inside of a hash when there's only one value that you need to reference. A better way to do it is actually this other way here of variables. If you can set a single value with a variable and then recall that variable later on, that's actually a lot more easier than looping through the array, grabbing the variable, things like that. So if it only has one value, I would actually use a variable instead, instead of storing it in a hash or storing it inside of an array. Now let's get a little bit more complex. So what if you have an array of hashes? How would you approach this? And is this actually the best way to handle your data? Well, let's take a look at this. We can see here we have an array called users and each one of those users are an individual hash. And the hash has the email key value pair and the password key value pair. And for an array of hashes, the good rule of thumb is, is that if you have a collection or a lot of things that you need to store, then it will be inside of an array. But if you have things that you need to describe, then it will be inside of a hash. So for this particular case, when you have a collection of users and each of those users have specific attributes, an array of hashes is actually the best way to go. That way, if you want to pull in each of the users, or if you want to iterate through all of them or perform some sort of logic, then you can just iterate through the array and then pull out those values accordingly. And that is a good use case of array of hashes is again, you will go outside and treat it like an array first for collections and hashes as descriptive ways so you can describe a user in this particular case or just a noun in general. But what about hash and arrays? When would we actually be using that? Well, we're just taking that last concept and flipping it. All it is, is that when we have a hash here, we'll just call it a hash called stuff. Each of the values, depending on how much data there is, if there is a lot of data, like let's say that we ha are storing a bunch of states as well as a bunch of colors, then it would be stored inside of an array. And we can reference each of those arrays inside of this hash by the key. Uh, so we can get the key value pair. So the good rule of thumb for this particular case is that if you have a specific object that has multiple values, then it will be a hash of arrays. And you can get even more crazy with the arrays of hashes within hashes, and you can embed them even further, but we'll just technically stop here just because of how complex it could be. Just know that the good rule of thumb is, is that arrays are good for storing items, uh, like a collection of items, and hashes are good to describe a certain object. So just to wrap up, you can get even more crazy with arrays and hashes. You can have arrays within arrays within hashes, etc., and you can go even more complex with that. But just good for a rule of thumb, depending on how complex it is, just break it down from the outermost to innermost and seeing which one of these you would actually use. And for each one of those, just know that arrays is really good for if you want to store a collection of items. And for hashes, they are really good for if you have to describe or to put together a related data when you are describing an object. And if you just have a single value, I wouldn't use either of these methods. I would actually use a variable, which isn't really a array or a hash. It's just another way for you to utilize your fundamental techniques. And if you are dealing with arrays of hashes or hashes of arrays, it really does depend, depending on if you need to store items or if you are describing items. And that sums up the wrap up of arrays versus hashes and when you would be using one versus the other. If you have any questions about anything in this video, don't forget to comment below with your questions. That goes as well as if you are still confused on 
some of the concepts I cover within this video or past videos. Without further ado, I will see you all in the next video. See ya!